Welcome back once again everyone, I'm Kplays Games. this is Eve Online. As you can see, I am in my escape pod, so that can only mean it's time to buy a new ship and test it out on missions. And the ship we're going to be doing today is going to be a battleship. And due to the vagaries of the random number generator, we have been left with all three of the Amar battleships. I promise you, this has not been deliberate, I have not been avoiding making Amar battleships. This is just the way that the numbers have come up. So at least you know, for the next three episodes, we're going to be doing Amar Battleships. Which one though? That is the question. Let's consult the random number generator and say minimum one and maximum three. Give us a number. Number one. And number one means today we're going to be building an Abaddon. Well, that's fine. Let's simulate the ship and have a look at the traits first because that's what we always do. And the traits are... Per level of Amar Battleship skill, you get 7.5% bonus to launch energy turret damage, so obviously damage, and 4% bonus to all armor resistances. This thing's going to be pretty tanky and armor tanked. And as always, it has the same roll bonus that every battleship in the game now has. More bonuses to shield extenders, armor plates, and reinforced bulkheads, which are just a buffer. Not that we're going to be using buffer. Let's take a look at the slots. A huge 8 high slots and 8 turrets, so the high slots is going to be 8 turrets and nothing else. Only 4 mid slots, which is pretty small. Propulsion module, camp battery, maybe a couple of tracking computers, something like that. And the low power slots, we have 7 of these. Now we're not going to need all 7 of them to be armor tank, because as we know this ship does have 4% per skill level to armor resistances. So we might be able to get away with just one armor repairer and one reactive hardener, three damage things and maybe some cap or or damage application modules. And as always it has three rig slots and 400 calibration to play with. Now being in a Mars ship and being a laser ship, it's going to have capacitor issues. We're just going to have to live with that. So I think we're going to make this thing a long range sniper. I know we keep doing long range snipers, but it is the most efficient way to do level 4. So having said that, let's just get the long range bit out of the way first. Large micro jump drive, on it goes. And we'll do the tank as well. We'll do one reactive armor hardener and one large armor repairer. And one large compact cap battery to run them. As we see, even with just these two modules on a large cap battery, it's nowhere near cap stable. This ship has appalling capacitor. Let's have a look at the energy turrets. Beam lasers are the long range ones. We're going to need large ones. Now, tachyon beam lasers are very much their own thing. They're extremely difficult to fit. As we see, each and every one of them uses 3712 megawatts of power. So fitting a full set of tachyons might not be possible. No, we're like 3000 power over and that's with nothing else on the ship yet. So tachyons are very much their own thing. They're extremely difficult to fit. So for that reason, I think we're just going to go for a mega beam laser too. Uh, even that has put us over power. Man, this ship is just really hard to fit. Right, let's do some heat sinks because these are the damage damage and rate of fire boosting modules for laser weapons. The rate of fire bonus is a bit of a pain because that means obviously it's going to speed up the cycle time which means they're going to chew up more capacitor. We'll just put some multi-frequency large on for the moment. We probably won't be using that because the range is awful and the cap use is high. Standard is the least cap use of all the ammos. Range is kind of alright. Okay. Targeting range is 120. Ideally that would be a bit higher, so we're probably going to do Sensor Booster 2 and then a Tracking Computer 2 and put 156 targeting range is probably enough. We're definitely going to need optimal range scripts for the lasers. Still nowhere near long enough. In that case we should probably look at Tracking Enhancer, Tracking Enhancer 2, 106 is still pretty awful, and another one puts it up to 113, again, still awful, this is with a scripted tracking computer, not great, 
Not great at all. So we're going to have to sort out this power grid because it's been flashing at me for ages. So that means a rig. Or we could, of course, put a power diagnostic on this ship. Give it more power and a little bit more cap as well. Right, we'll try it like that. And then we'll have a look at weapon range rigs because this is what is going to kill this ship if we can't get the weapon range up high enough to be a sniper. Energy weapon rigs, large. I believe that this is the one we need. The large energy locus coordinator increases the optimal range by 15%. So we're going to need at least one of these. They're not too expensive, although two of them will probably put us over power grid. Yeah. Hmm, annoying. What's the range? Range has at least gone up to 117 fall off now, which still isn't quite good enough. Dang it. We might have to look at even a longer range ammo, but then that means that your damage is going to fall off. There's 151 there, but it's only 402 damage from microwave. That's not very good. 469 with infrared. Infrared is probably better than microwave, but it's still not great. Man, this ship is just awful. <laughs> This is not a fun build, and the cap is going to have to last a lot longer than 2 minutes 48, my friend. It's going to have to last a lot longer than that. Semiconductor memory cell, 345 is awful, but it's at least more. Now if we're going to do two cap rigs, they're going to have to be tech 1, which is really quite annoying. 303, 333, 4 minutes 22, that's pretty damn awful as well. Damn. The ship is shockingly bad. Whilst I have a think about what we can do to rescue it, I'm going to put some drones in it. And we'll do hammerhead twos, five of them, and five hobgoblin twos, just so we can be nice and lazy. The only things these would not be good against would be Angel Cartel. So I think that is pretty much all we can do with this absolute abomination of a fit. The power grid isn't good enough to have tachyon beam lasers, unless you go down to only having a cap recharger here, which is not going to be anywhere near as good as a large battery. But maybe we can get a tech 2 battery on this. We might have enough resources to do it. Just. Okay, that's at least something. The tank is going to be okay, because we're going to be over 100 kilometers away and with a reactive armor hardener and with a 20% bonus to our armor resistances from the ship traits anyway, it's gonna be kind of alright-ish, maybe. The cap does only last 4 minutes 35, so we're gonna have to toggle the armor repairer. In fact, even with the armor rep off, it's still only 28 minutes. With standard 117 damage goes up from the lasers to 536 and with multi-frequency L it only goes up to 805 and that's with three damage improving modules on it so this is not the best of ships we're going to have quite a long time to run missions it's not going to be quick missions let's just see if we can't squeeze on a tech 2 cap at rig. Oh, we can just. Okay, that's interesting. Alright, so it's one of them. And one of them. Give us a few more seconds, but every little helps. So we're going to need eight of these. Eight of these. And will we bother with the standard? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe take some ultraviolet, which I believe is the one that's in the middle of the two of them. Yeah, we'll take some ultraviolet as well. Right, I'll go and buy this disaster and then we'll try and run some missions in it. 
All right, we're back. After a very long shopping trip, I had to go all the way to Jita to buy this thing because half of the parts were not available where I live. It's a good looking ship, massive lot of engines at the back, very stately and shiny. It looks much more powerful than it actually is. We've all seen the stats, we've seen the fitting screen. Right, let's get a mission. Okay, we have Massive Attack, also known as Not Very Big Attack. It's similar to Serpentist Extravaganza that we did in the previous episode in The Tempest. It's one jump over, it's multiple rooms filled with Serpentus, which is bad for us. Right, we've made it to the mission location and I've rearranged all the modules, put the drones in folders. We are going to use the weapons group because we know that the damage of this thing is so bad we're going to have to keep them grouped. Our tracking range, so that's not good. Let's put multi frequency on. Let's see if we can't hit a cruiser with multi frequency. Uh, yes, would be the answer to that. I mean, the Abaddon does look cool when it fires. You have to give it that. That is pretty cool looking. The problem we're going to run into is that running missions in Galenti space are going to meet a lot of enemies who are weakest to kinetic and thermal secondary and being Amar, all of our laser crystals do EM and thermal, so you only do a little bit of thermal. So we're not set up particularly well for killing Serpentis, but that's just how it goes. If we were running missions in a Mars base against Blood Raiders and Sancha, the ship would be much better. Then you have to take what you're given in EVE Online sometimes. I'll just let the drones kill these things, I'm not going to waste any capacitor by firing at these things. Alright then, one more. Just because it looks really cool. Bring the drones in, that's... Airport room one done. Just five guards on the in gate. I believe there's two more rooms, maybe three more rooms in this mission. It's very, very slow. All right, room two. There's some bad guys down here and ones that are further away up there. Well, further away is good. We like that. I think we'll stick with the multi-frequency because it's our shortest range ammo. Optimal range 43, so these guys are actually pretty much on our optimal. Let's smash the battle cruisers first. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's actually doing not bad against them. We'll put the drones against the destroyers. Let's see, the guys up here have aggressed. Oh, that's fine. And we should probably... No, drones, kill the destroyers. Before we start working on the battleships, we're going to need to... Good. And this other destroyer, please. Drones. And then we'll get them to destroy this elite frigate up here, which seems to be all on its own, which is good. So when you see multiples of these little swings, that's when it becomes a problem. When they start aggressing your drones. Well, the battleship's nearly dead already. Maybe I was being too harsh in the Abaddon. No, I'm going to stick with it. This ship is bloody awful. And even this one frigate has de-aggressed us and started aggressing our drones. But luckily, as I said, he was the only one of his kind. Which is good, so the drones managed to survive. And now they can work on the destroyers. I mean, this ship will get the job done. It's just not as good as basically any other battleship we've ever made before in this fitting series. Bring the light drones in. We'll put the medium drones out. There we go. Uh, maybe we won't put the medium drones out because we just two shotted a cruiser. Doing fine. Oh, all right, room two clear. Excellent. Warp drive active. Onwards. And bring the light of heaven to these horrible infidels. A little bit of Amar roleplay for you there. Might as well have some fun. Whilst the ship is very slowly killing everything. There is another room after this one. I thought there might have been. Okay, and these guys are further away, but I do believe they're still within a good range of our multi-freak. Yeah, between 43 and 74. It looks like we're still two-shotting cruisers. Let's see if we can't pick off a frigate. Like this Guardian agent. missed and we missed so let's go back in the cruisers yep we're hitting cruisers just fine that's the other problem with the ship the application is pretty bad like the only tracking enhancer we have is indeed a tracking enhancer too down here everything else is dedicated to range because the range on this ship is appalling Okay, let's see if we can sneak to the frigates. Well, we got that one. Because that was just a normal Tech 1 basic frigate. It's the Guardians that are the problem. Although they are yellow box, that means they're on direct approach. So their angular velocity is going to be pretty much zero, which is good for us. Can we target all the way over uh, there? Yes, we can. Well, half of them. Hey! Cool! Look at that. 1,950 damage and one shot at that frigate. Lovely! Let's... That... No, we're going to have to change ammunition, you fool. Change to infrared, which is a long-range ammo. It goes all the way out to 134. Bloop, that's more like it. Weapons work better when you change your ammo to the long-range stuff, you idiot. Okay, we'll just start working on the battle cruisers then. Everything else is on approach, that's why we're able to target them now, because they've come closer. But that's fine. We want them to do that. I think we'll kill the destroyer next, just because we can.
and then back to the battle cruisers. Yep. Are we gonna be within ultraviolet range? Ultraviolet range is 106. Uh, not quite, but you know, close enough. Let's fire some purple lasers instead. No, let's not, because it's just missing far too often. Back to the red lasers. It's more like it. I mean, it is working pretty well. We've basically taken no damage at all in this entire mission. Like, none. Now that is 108 kilometers. But I think we'll stay in infrared until it comes within 100 and then we'll switch over to... Then we'll switch over to ultraviolet. Well, it seems to be within ultraviolet range now, so we'll just stop fighting, instantly change, and get back to fighting. Boom. If and when it comes within 74, then we'll move over to Multifreak. Not that I think it's going to survive that long. Which is nice. Where's the drone bay on this thing? Is it hidden at the back here? Uh, I'm not seeing it. I don't know where the drones come out of on this ship. Maybe these little hangers here at the front? It's not big. It's not the flashiest of ships. It won't kill everything quickly, but it will kill things. Come on, kill it. There we go. God. That took some doing, didn't it? Maybe we'll just slowly grind away at this guy as well. Optimal between... Optimal 75, fall off between 75 and 106. And the capacitor's still going down. says we're at 100% shield, but we have actually lost 16 hit points on our shield. On to the next room, which I think is the final one of this mission. Yes, no more acceleration gates. Three groups of enemies. This one is the closest, so we shall target them and switch over to multi frequency straight away. And we've accidentally target locked an asteroid. No, thank you. I do not want to combine. Any. This is not the year 2008. We do not go mining in battleships anymore. Beam lasers just look so cool, man. Right, this frigate's on approach. Hey, take that, you little shit. Right, and then we shall just go anti-clockwise, and we'll hit this group next. That one's dead, so let's change to infrared, which is a long-range ammo. Plink away at the battle cruisers. That seems to be working fine. There's another... Guardian scout there. So hopefully these guys will notice we're shooting at them and start to approach. Yes, which means we can pick off the frigates, I do believe. The frigates haven't yellow boxed yet. Now they will. Oh, we still hit that one. Right, good. Frigate dead. And next frigate, please. Jolly good. 
and then as usual we'll go back to the battle cruisers and then the cruisers and I believe there's one thing here that's not targeted. Yes, this battle cruiser. In fact, these guys are actually in ultraviolet range, so I'll stop firing infrared, move to ultraviolet, get some purple lasers on show. Pew! Lovely. Rearrange the targets. There we are. We're firing from this side of the ship now, are we? And there he goes. And he's dead, and we'll shoot at this red boxing one who is actually shooting at us. Allegedly. Not that it did him much good, because he's dead now. And this one will also die. Oh, there he goes. Okay, let's go back to infrared. Infrared? No, we don't have to. We can stay on ultraviolet. These guys are close enough. So we can then target the two frigates, who should wake up and notice that we've destroyed their friends as soon as they go yellow box we'll s start shooting at them come on little frigate there we go now it's dead and the next one we destroy these frigates, A, because they like to shoot at dr any drones we may want to put out, and B, because they can warp jam you, and that is not good. You do not want to be warp jammed in missions. There we go, easy peasy. Two more battle cruisers, three battleships, and that will be mission complete. Considering this thing has capacitor issues, it's um, it's never had to turn on its armor repairer. We've never been below 100% shield because we're managing to hit everything from so far away that it's not been able to hit us. I mean, look, they're just spraying fire everywhere. We'll just do them in order of range. Take the the closest one first, I think. If and when they come within 74, then we'll switch over to multi-frequency and hit them really hard. Well, this one's going to get within multi-freak range, so we'll just start shooting it with multi-freak anyway. We're only slightly outside our fall-off range and it is still approaching us. Yeah, that's more like it. Now we are missing quite a few. Yeah. Come on, lasers. Hit better. There we go. Nah, I'm going to go back to ultraviolet. This is missing too often. There we go. Now they're all actually hitting the target. Oh, we've actually taken some visible shield damage for the first time in this entire mission. Four rooms in and two enemies remaining. <laughs> This guy's nearly dead. We'll go straight onto the last one after this. There's been no point putting the drones out because our drone control range is only 60 kilometers and um, nothing's got that close apart from the first room, which were the guards that we walked in at 25k. Right, one more bad guy to go. He's dead on our optimal range with this laser ammo. Lovely. Line him up for a broadside shot. I'm gonna go to the 
the nice camera. Just drag our ship slightly over that way. That's what we like to see. Lasers just look so cool when you fire. Oh, the bad guy's nearly dead already. Let's go back to orbit camera. And one more shot. Maybe two more shots. One more shot. There we go. Mission complete. Let's go and get another one. That was much easier than I thought it would be in this ship. I do apologize, Abaddon. You're not awful. You're just not very good. Alright, a massive attack has been handed in, and I've requested another mission, and it's one of my favourites, the Damsel in Distress. It's against mercenaries, so ideally kinetic damage would be our primary, but that's fine, because we do thermal as our secondary output, and that's what their secondary weakness to. We will kill them eventually. It's only one system over. We have done this mission many times on this channel, so I'm sure you know what to expect. Right, we're on the mission system, and what we're going to do is the old trick. You do not want to press this button to walk to location. This will put you in the beacon right in the middle of a big ball of bad guys. What you do is that you right click in space and you select the encounter. You warp, select walk to location, and then drive, stop your ship, and then right click walk encounter, walk to location, and now you can choose a range at which to go in. What happens if you right click in space and try and warp in at range first, sometimes it actually drops you on the beacon and doesn't actually warp your range. So if you tell it to warp to the beacon and then cancel it and then pick warp at range, then it usually works a lot better. We're going to warp in at 70 kilometers, I think. Warp drive active. Which if we're lucky will be spot on our ultraviolet optimal range. Or indeed, at our multi-frequency optimal range. We can make that decision when we get there. As we know, we can instantly change our laser crystals. It's not a huge issue. It's not like projectile weapons where we'd have to spend 10 seconds reloading. This is just a one open space in this mission. No extra rooms and just this one site. I will talk you through the rest of it when we land. Here we are. Yep, we have actually come in at 74, which is great. These are the initial defenders. I say initial because there are quite a lot of reinforcements in this mission. And they're triggered in a number of different ways. The first a lot of reinforcements show up when you kill this cruel character here. So kill him last. The next lot of reinforcements is when you shoot up these pleasure gardens because you have to destroy one of these stations, drops the thing you need. It's usually the one that's furthest away from the beacon, but because we didn't land on the beacon, we ain't got no clue which one it is. And these stations bring in reinforcements as well. Well, the correct station, you'll know if you're shooting at the correct station when reinforcements show up. You do get a message in local chat when the reinforcements show up, so we'll be using that. And the reinforcements, I think there's three waves. The first one appears when the shield takes 50% damage, and the last, the next one is when the shield takes full damage, and then the last one is when it takes structure, I believe. So obviously, stop shooting at the station as soon as the reinforcements arrive otherwise you're going to get yourself snowed under because there are quite a lot of them one of the reinforcements is a named NPL, named npc called zor he flies a battleship that does a thousand damage every four seconds so it's he does hit quite hard and the best thing about zor is that he is guaranteed to drop an implant there are two versions of that implant there's zor's navigation link 
and there's Zor's navigation hyperlink. The navigation link is worth about 8,000 isk, so that's absolutely not worth picking up. But if he drops the hyperlink, that's worth about 70 million isk. It's very rare, as you can tell from the price. Because Zor actually appears in quite a few missions, and he always has a drop of at least a one implant. So they made it really rare that he drops the good one. I believe he's in a couple of level 3 missions, and he's in this level 4 mission and another level 4 called The Right Hand of Zazmataz. These things might be battleships, but they're only worth 250,000. They die very, very easily. Nothing in this mission is particularly difficult, unless, of course, you warp in right at the beacon and you're surrounded by everything. Let's just kill this guy. Hey, one shot with multi freak. And this is the reinforcements he calls in. So if we shot him first, we would have had another six battleships to deal with on top of everything else. That will just snipe away with her lovely ultraviolet. So far we've taken 2% shielded damage in this whole mission. And I think I'm going to guess that is a pleasure card and we need to destroy. When the Pleasure Garden explodes, it does do area of effect damage. It can destroy your drones if you use drones to kill it, so be warned. There's one gone already. Just watch this glorious thing in action. It is a damn good looking ship. I'll give it that. Of course, these enemies being mercenaries, every single one of them will drop at least some kind of loot. I mean, you would want to loot at least Zor's wreck in this mission anyway, so this is a good one to come back in a, a salvage Noctis or destroyer or battle cruiser, whatever you use that has lots of tractor beams and salvagers. I'll just be triangulating Zor's wreck with my <laughs> micro jump drive. And this guy's actually almost in multi freak range, but I think we'll just stay on ultraviolet because its optimal range is 75 and he's spot on it. Dead. Okay, let's see if we have picked the correct pleasure garden to shoot at. We'll keep an eye on local chat. Maybe that was the wrong one. I'm not seeing any reinforcements. And local chat is not blinking at me. Okay, that's the wrong one. It's... This one. This is the one we should have been firing at. I think they've changed the hit points on the wrong one. It seems to have been getting absolutely wrecked. So I think they've lowered the hit points on the wrong one, which helps you differentiate between the two of them. Yeah, this is the right one. As we see, local chat is flashing. And it's saying it's called for backup. And there they are. This is the first of two waves, which are identical. That's the second one there. These two waves always seem to spawn at the same time. Even though they are actually set to different triggers, just that you blow straight past the first and second trigger really, really quickly. Spider drones incoming, that's okay, we'll just put out our light drones to deal with them. 
spider drones will be in range and they'll go red and the drones are going to attack them on their own just like that lovely jubbly and we'll get rid of the cruisers Switch over to multi frequency after this cruiser is gone because these battleships are getting really rather close. I think the drones have gone idle. Let's just bring them back. They're not going to be contributing much. Alright, that's the last of the cruisers dead. A multi freak. Yep, oh, that's hitting. Alright. That is doing the business. Pew! Wow. You know, I know that these battleships are pretty squishy, but that is mightily impressive. Considering this ship is only doing 805 DPS from its guns. I think we've been lucky with the missions we've been given. Like, we've been able to fight pretty much on our optimal range all the time, and you see the difference that makes. Even though the DPS is not huge, it is able to project it a long way. And at this kind of range, tracking is not really a problem. You know, all of this was discussed in our turret, turret mechanics guide, which you'll find at the top right hand corner of your screen right now. Damage application is much more important than raw damage in some cases, and this is one of these cases. Again, local chat will flash as soon as we hit the last reinforcement trigger. Should be any time now. Here we go, local is flashing, so we shall stop firing. And these are the last bad guys of the mission. That is Zor over there. We'll shoot the cruisers first, as always. Stay on ultraviolet, because it's going to be most accurate at this kind of range. Then we'll pick off the frigates. We'll kill one cruiser, and then if we've target locked any frigates by then, we'll move over to them. Yes, we have, that's good. And up. None of these guys seem to be elite. And up. Lovely. I do like one-shotting things. It's never not fun to do that. Beautiful. See, all the damage we're taking has been from Zor. And for the first time in this entire video, this armor tank ship has dropped below 50% shields. We may actually have to turn the armor hardener on and the armor repairer. Wow. Yeah, we'll just turn them both on. Look at the mess he's making of my beautiful shiny ship. Say so, that's really rather rude. But if you want to come in at that kind of range, then you're going to bump into some multi frequency lasers, my friend. Oh, yes. Pew. Pew. And he'll probably die in the next volley. Yep, there he goes. You can turn the armor repairer and armor hardener back off, switch over to ultraviolet and finish off the station. And I am going to bookmark his wreck. Instead of triangulating with the micro jump drive and waiting three minutes for it to change, I'll just warp. I'll just warp off to something and then warp straight back to his wreck. 
because this mission is an open site and there is no in gate, we're not going to land on the gate, we will actually land on his wreck. And there we go, boom! Big area of effect damage. And one interesting thing to note is that the damsel managed to teleport herself from the ruins of that all the way into our cargo. Again, because this mission is an open site and there is no in-gate, a lot of player pirates used to scan you down, warp in on you at 100 to see if you were doing this mission or not. They would be cloaked, and then as soon as you blew up the station, they'd warp straight onto the station, open one of the two cargo containers that used to be here, take the damsel out of it, and then ransom it to you. So CCP changed it so that she actually teleports straight into your cargo now. Warp drive active. Some missions do teleport the things straight into your cargo, some do not. So the, it is a nice quality of life thing that they kind of stopped player pirates being able to run some mission items, but not on every mission. CCP don't really do attention to detail, they kind of do things half-assed. So some missions are fixed, some are not, and obviously the player pirates know which ones are not, and they'll still do that. They will still steal your mission items and run some of them back to you. So just before we hand the mission back in, we're going to go back to Zor's wreck. Because that is a much faster way of doing things and triangulating a micro jump drive for three minutes. Back we go to his wreck. It's all set destination, back to the agent station. Hey, we've made it to Zor's wreck, and he's only dropped the crap one, which, as we can see, is worth 2,420 isk. Nothing here worth keeping, so let's just go and hand the mission in and round up this video. Warp drive active. Alright, so that was the Amar Abaddon battleship. We finally did an Amar ship, everyone! Hooray! And, although I had disparaged it all the way through the video and said it was really crap, and the cap was crap, and the damage is crap, and the tracking was crap, it actually handled itself very, very well in the missions we ran. I think that was more to do with the type of missions we got, and we were able to use the extreme long range of the ship to its full advantage, but it worked an absolute treat. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, do look after yourself. See you later.